Welcome to another episode of the NRT Now 5-Minute Edition. We are here with Jonas Myron. And Jonas, hey I think we might have heard from you with 10,000 Reasons, Our God, some of the songs that we've been listening to for years. You're the man behind it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of crazy thinking back on those songs. I wrote them with my friends, and now they're kind of just gone around the world, you know? It's been an incredible blessing. For someone around my age, I'm mid thirties, Our God and 10,000 Reasons, those have been anthems for quite a while now. They've been sung in churches from here to kingdom come. I'm sure that some of the records, some of the CDs are worn out by now. What was the process in writing those with Chris Tomlin and some and Matt Redman? What got you into writing that with those guys? Uh, however long ago that was. I think it's I think, almost been 10 years. Yeah, I think so. You know, a lot of these songs were actually burst out of friendship. Uh, we were just like buddies who were hanging out. Uh, sometimes we would play together on tour. And and a lot of the times it was really just not for an album or for a conference or for, you know, I remember like our God, me and Matt Redmond started it, that actually in in the back of a, we had led some, led some worship in Florida and we were sitting in a hotel uh, lounge and I played Matt this idea that I had. And I remember people were packing down in this uh, kind of backstage area and it was like people moving and we started just singing that chorus together, Our God is Greater. And, and little did we know that, you know, Chris would take it and make it into what has become all these years later. And similar with 10,000 Reasons, you know, that was, me and Matt sitting in a chapel uh, in England outside, outside London. And somehow that song just got birthed, but didn't really think of it, that it was going to go to where it has, you know, because the song has no pre-chorus, it's got no bridge. We thought, it's such a simple song, you know. But we, we loved it, but we just didn't know if it was going to connect with people uh, because it was so simple. And we thought, like, is this, like, too, like, hymny? You know, is it too, like... But it worked, so... It's been an incredible blessing. And so you're talking about London and some of the international flair. One of the things that if you guys haven't heard it already, you are Swedish born. That's right. So when did you make it to the States or when did you start coming into the U.S. Christian music scene here? Yeah. So I think what happened was that, um, well, first of all, I was touring with Hillsong years back. I was leading worship and writing for Hillsong for many years. And um, that's kind of how I started as a worship leader in the London uh, community. And then um, little by little, I ended up getting more requests to write for U.S. artists and for, uh, you know, streams of the church in the U.S. So I uh, did a ton of trips and then uh, I signed actually to Universal and Capital CMG uh, in Nashville seven years ago now, which is amazing. So I actually moved to L.A. and wow. set up my studio there. And it's been, I mean, it's been a wild in a wild few years, but I'm so grateful. Well, and being in LA, that's where a lot of more of the mainstream music comes from. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the labels out there in LA and I'm having a mind blank here, but you've been able to be a part of that mainstream music scene right along with the Christian music scene. Yeah. Working with like Natasha Bedingfield. I read Barbara Streisand. Yeah. Uh, Adina Menzel. Yeah. Which as a parent, Please tell me you're not the one that's responsible for Let It Go. I'm not responsible. I promise. Oh, hallelujah. I, yes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. It's Gosh, that song is going to follow Dina all her days, I think. Oh, but I don't think she could escape it by this no, point. No, I don't think so. No, man, it's been an amazing blessing, to be honest, because I, I grew up as a missionary kid, right? So I, I grew up in Africa with my parents, and we were traveling through Russia, and we were traveling in Lapland and Iceland. So I always had this kind of mission call in my life. And I, I always saw music as this beautiful bridge uh, to connect people and to connect, obviously the streams of the church as well, um, which can also be divided, um, but more so, um, you know, taking the good news into the world, you know, the good news of hope of God, uh, and that there is light uh, in this dark world through music. And that was always my, uh, that was always my, longing and heart that I could kind of do both. A lot of people said, you have to choose one or the other. You can't do both. And I've 
for me, it was always like, but wait, why would I pick one or the other? Because obviously I, I love God, but I am, I also love music. And I think not just the church needs to have songs of hope. So does the world. And uh, we can't be greedy and just sit with these, these songs in the church. We have to share them. We have to share the good news. So I, um, I decided to make the move to LA and not do the Nashville thing. Uh, but I, I still go to Nashville a lot, but I, I actually love kind of swimming in both waters because I feel like it keeps me sharp. It keeps me uh, dependable on always needing the spirit, you know, every day in my life. Um, someone said like, Jonas must be so hard for you to live in LA. It's such a dark city. Um, and I said, you know what? No, because the darker the night, the stronger the light. Wow. And that's something I really found, man, living in LA, like that it is a dark city, but the light shines brighter in the dark. And um, it's just been beautiful watching that reality. So talking about being a Christian in music and not yeah. necessarily being in Christian music, kind of that differentiation, what is it like as you're going through and working with some of these artists uh, that on the mainstream side that either may not like Christianity or just being in that space where it's not necessarily Christian friendly, like walking into the CCM side? What What is it like living in that world and what is your approach when you go into that? Yeah, Andy, I think every session is different because I think every person has a different um, experience uh, with the church and Christianity and with faith in general. And I think especially in America, I've noticed a lot of us, a Swedish person. Um, in LA, there's a lot of people who actually come from a church background um, and that come from a kind of faith upbringing, but maybe along the way, something happened or they got burnt or they got hurt. Uh, so I see my job so much. Sometimes it's just being, just being someone who can be there to listen to their story and be there to love them for where they're at and, and just point them up and say, just, you know, there's, you know, there's always a second chance. It's always, it's always um, a new way. You know, there is a new door. There is a new, a new song to sing, you know? And I think, I think that for me has been sometimes those stories of seeing the transformation in someone who maybe come in super like anti-God or anti-church or anti-worship, but then realizing, right, wow, wow, it's all about the heart. It's not about religion. It's not about having to do this or be this person. It's all about the heart. And I think that is what God sees. You know, man looks at the outward, but God sees the heart. And to me, that is so beautiful with music. And when you get into the room with someone, because you, you get to really share hearts with another and with each other. Um, and it's very easy. I think, you know, before a session, people come in with their like, and I've had that a lot of times like, Oh, you were the guy who writes the Christian songs. You're like, you were the <laughs> religious guy, but, but very quickly they realize, Oh wait, you're, you're just a, a really normal, cool guy that has faith in his heart and, and loves people. And, and we often end up having incredible conversations after the sessions or uh, throughout. And sometimes I think that is the goal. I mean, it's not always a song. I realize sometimes I'm actually there to just be alive in, in the room, you know, and then the song is maybe the excuse to get me into the session, but there's always a bigger plan. And, and it's just beautiful watching God always do, do his thing, you know? Uh, That's powerful. And so, I guess the next question logically for me is what have you taken from the mainstream and brought into the CCM world and vice versa? What have you taken from the CCM world and moved into the mainstream world? That's a great question, Andy, because I do think there is a lot of overlap. Uh, for example, I wrote a song for Andrea Bocelli for his last album um, and it's called Gloria, the gift of life. And it's actually a song of, uh, about Thanksgiving, uh, about being grateful and it's saying, for the morning sun, for, for the tears I cry, for, for all these things that happen in my life, um, I say Gloria, which means glory be to God. So I, I love to take these messages of faith and put them in, in, in a language that everyone can understand. And this song has now traveled around the whole world. That album went number one in both the US and the UK. And, and it's wow. amazing seeing these songs travel uh, into the real lives of people out there in the world. Uh, with these themes that are actually just inspired from heaven. And I kind of love that, you know, I, I, I love taking, 
taking worship and, and the spirit of worship and the spirit of, of, of God's heart and putting it in, in a way which everyone can understand. And then for, uh, to flip it into the, I would say into the CCM world, um, I think staying relevant is really important because sometimes it's easy and maybe the worship world that songs are starting to sound the same because we kind of just repeat ourselves. So we, you know, we, cause we stay in our own bubble very often. The formula. Uh, the formula. Exactly. And I think I would love to kind of come in and break up the formula a little bit and just kind of say, Hey guys, let's try this. So let's, let's go here instead of here. And, and that's been really cool because I think music is not supposed to be in a box. Music for God should not sound generic. Music for God should be the best should be the most inspired, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, sometimes the great composers of, um, you know, in history, Bach, Beethoven, uh, Mozart, you know, these are all, they were all church musicians, actually. These guys all wrote church music, but they gave their best and they gave their finest and they, they revolutionized music, actually. And people ran to the church to hear these compositions because they were so inspired and full of the of the glory of god and and i really want us in the church to, to pursue that that people will run into the church to hear what we create for his glory that it will be so beautiful and it will be so magnificent magnificent and so anointed that um people will just hear about it and and, and want to be part of it and, and know and know this god that we sing about well and i guess as we wrap up here, we probably should talk about your new single mountains. Yeah. I think that's why we're here. Something like that. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so talk a little bit about this new song mountains that just came out that I can definitely hear that LA mainstream vibe that come in, comes in, but we have the message as well. Can you talk a little bit about this new single that you released? Yeah. Thanks so much, Andy. So I've got a new song out called mountains and uh, this song is, it's really special to me actually, because I wrote it, when I was kind of facing a lot of mountains in my own life and I had just been to Israel and um, I remember standing um, overlooking Jerusalem and our tour guide uh, went over to this mustard plant and he broke it and put a little mustard seed in my hand. And I don't know if you've ever held a mustard seed, uh, not unless it's come out of the spice cupboard or something by accident. Exactly. <laughs> but, but they're so tiny. I mean, it's, they're literally it's like a black, tiny, tiny little seed. And, uh, you know, I, I got reminded straight of, of Matthew where it says, if you have faith just at the size of a mustard seed, you can speak to that mountain and say, move, and it shall move. And I thought, isn't that incredible? Like sometimes we think faith, we have to have this enormous powerful faith to be able to see a breakthrough or a miracle, but actually, you know, it's just the size of that tiny little seed that I was that I held in my hand that day. And, and I just felt like this needs to be a song. And um, I wrote mountains with Daniel James in Nashville. Uh, and we had an amazing session and we felt the song had something special, but it was not until now uh, when we released it um, just at the end of June. And it's been an amazing response, man, for this song globally, actually, because I think the message of, of I can move mountains when I'm with you is saying that no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, with love and faith in your heart, anything is possible. And it's, so it's an anthem of faith. And it's a, it's a, a song that kind of stirs up uh, your heart to have more faith and to say, I'm not going to give up on my situation. I'm not going to say, accept this circumstance. I'm going to have faith for this mountain to, to be moved. And when we do that, I mean, it's incredible what happens. So uh, the song is out and uh, I'm so excited to share it with the world. Um, we're already getting messages from a lot of people saying that this, this song is helping them and they're in the mountains they're, they're facing. And for me, Andy, I mean, that is my like biggest reward in what I do as a songwriter and as, as an artist is to, to see these songs minister to people and to see these songs actually make a difference in, in real people's lives. Well, Jonas, definitely appreciate you hanging out with us for a little bit. I think I really need to start naming this like the NRT now, like the 10 minute edition, because I don't think we've ever kept it to five yet. <laughs> Sorry, Andy, too much to share, too much to share. But I love it. I love it. I, I think that's my fault. I need to rename it. 
not the okay not the time i need well, to rename it to 10 minutes so nrt now 10 minute podcast edition there you go bro love it you're asking good questions that's why so <laughs> well just appreciate the time here jonas thank you so much andy and big blessings to your show thanks so much for having me thanks for supporting mountains and looking forward to meeting in person next time yes